celebrating the 17th anniversary of the Curran Center, in which we will honor the Center's founding director, Mark S. Massa of the Society of Jesus. Now we'll let you return to music and mingling in a few minutes, but we wanted to start with a few words of welcome. You know, when you're a kid and have a birthday on the weekend, you stretch it a day or two to celebrate it with your schoolmates when you get back to class. In Puerto Rico, where my family is from, Christmas isn't just one day. It's a good reason to party for weeks until Three Kings Day. However, leave it to Mark Massa to have the buildup for a celebration in his honor last for almost three years. <laughs> And so we celebrate the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th years of the Kern Center on this exciting evening. As a way to honor Mark and to support the great work of the Center, we have created, with all of the humility due to a member of the Society of Jesus, the Mark S. Massa S.J. Curran Center Magis Fund. I mean, it's not like you had a building named after you. <clears throat> anyway, kidding aside, I am thrilled and very grateful to announce that thanks to all our supporters, everyone gathered here and those who could not make it this evening, we have to date raised nearly $600,000 for the Magis Fund. Thank you. Your incredible generosity fortifies the current center's future and will help us to further our mission to advance knowledge, understanding, and appreciation of American Catholicism within the academy, the church, the broader religious community, and the general public. And while we're here to celebrate Father Mark and the founding vision for the current center, I must also note that we would not know the center as it is without the leadership and efforts of the center's second director, Dr. Christine Fierhenzi, the chair, the chair of Fordham's Department of Theology. In her capable hands, the center blossomed into the nationally recognized hub for the study of American Catholic history, identity, and practice it is today. And so it's my pleasure to invite Christine to offer the invocation for this evening. Thank you, Michael, and um, good evening, everybody. So wonderful to be with you. Uh, one of my favorite um, beliefs, Catholic beliefs, is the belief in the communion of saints, and so you'll sort of hear that in the, um, in the, in the invocation. It's the belief that we're all connected wherever we are, even through life and death, to each other by spiritual bonds, and I feel that way about all the people around us um, who have been part of the current center. So let us pray. Loving, creative, patient, and faithful God, we gather today to give thanks for and to celebrate nearly two decades of blessings and good work by Fordham's beloved Curran Center for American Catholic Studies, and in a special way to honor our founding director, Father Mark Massa. We give you thanks for the privilege of participating in the Center's mission, and also to do so in lively dialogue between Catholicism and many disciplines and the wider tapestry of cultures, communities, and faiths that make up our university, our city, our country, and our world. In pursuing the Center's mission, we've sought to serve Fordham's Catholic educational mission and to contribute in service to a more informed, compassionate, just, and peaceful society and to your greater glory. As we look around us today, we're but a small representative sample of the great cloud of witnesses who have contributed to and benefited from the Center's work over the years. So now we thankfully call to mind and we ask your blessing on and we invite you and invite them to join us in spirit, so many people, so many people and their families. And so as I go on here, maybe you want to just conjure up people you know that are connected with the Center classmates, fellow faculty, other board members, and so forth. 
So we bring to mind and we invite into our presence now in spirit our founding direct donors, John and Connie Curran, and Ruth and Michael Lipper, our scholarship donors, including the O'Briens, the Bonobos, the Salvaticos, the Jones family, so many others, and all of our gen generous supporters, including many of our, our alums. We bring to mind our dedicated advisory board members and officers, past and present, especially chairs and vice chairs, Steve DeSalvo, Kevin Raphael, John Driscoll, Christine Hughes, and Anthony Filarino. We bring to mind our gifted directors, faculty, and staff members, from starting with Mark Massa all the way to the present day, and the many at Fordham who have supported the center, including our president, Bobby McShane. And in a most special way, we call to mind and ask you to bless our beloved CACS concentrators and alumni, who hail from many religious backgrounds and communities from all corners of the country and many places on the globe and who each year go on to be and do great things in so many different places and professions. May all these special people, our own communion of saints, gathered here, scattered across the world, living and dead, be present with us in spirit today. And may your Holy Spirit be with us as we rejoice, give thanks, and ask your blessings on the center and all whom it serves and embraces. By your grace and our loving labors, may the current center continue to grow and flourish as a beacon of wisdom, learning, and a force for good in our needy world. We make this prayer in your name, O gracious God, and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Christine. Vision is crucial, but it can't materialize unless there is the support and commitment to make that vision a reality. Well, support and commitment are probably the best words to describe the legacy of John and Connie Curran's relationship to the center. It's been a privilege to get to know Connie and her unwavering support for our work. And though I never got to meet John, I have felt his living presence in the stories that have been shared with me a Bronx native and a Fordham grad who loved this university and believed in the vision of the center. Connie has been working hard with us as one of our honorary co-chairs for this evening's celebration, but unfortunately she could not be with us tonight because she's celebrating her grandson's high school graduation. However, she was gracious enough to record a brief message for us that we'll share right now. Good evening and welcome to tonight's celebration. I don't know if you know, but the original anniversary celebration was scheduled for 2020. COVID-19 quickly put those plans on hold. However, as you can see, I'm not there this evening. As it turns out, my grandson, who graduates from high school, the ceremony is this evening in Pennsylvania. So. Although I'm not able to be there in person, I am there in spirit. I'd like to start by recognizing a few people who were and are instrumental in the success of the current center. Fordham President, Father Joseph McShane, Founding Director of the current center, Father Mark Massa, Past Director, Dr. Christine Hinsey, and Current Director, Dr. Michael Lee. Their dedication and leadership enabled the center to blossom and become a national hub for American Catholic studies. The center not only provides a quality Catholic studies program, but it also offers a variety of programs and events for the broader religious community and the general public. So tonight, we celebrate those past 17 years and look forward to the center's continued growth and success in the future. However, we are also here this evening to honor and recognize a very special man, Father Mark Massa. 20 years or so ago, Mark had a vision, a plan, a desire, a determination to establish a center for American Catholic studies here at Fordham. I think we can all agree he succeeded. 
During his time as director at the center, Mark put in place the foundation and the direction, you might say the footprints for his future successors. Those footprints, along with great leadership, enabled the center to achieve growth and recognition as a premier center for American Catholic studies. So tonight, we honor and recognize Father Massa with the endowed Mark S. Massa, S.J., Curran Center Magis Fund. I can think of no one more deserving of this honor than Mark. So congratulations, Mark, and I, and many, if not all, of the Catholic study concentrators. Thank you for that vision you had so many years ago. This fund, not only showing our appreciation and gratitude to Mark, will also help the center continue to thrive and grow in its Catholic Jesuit education mission. In closing, I would like to again congratulate Mark on this well-deserved honor. I also want to thank Father Joseph McShane, who will be stepping down as president at the end of this month for his leadership of Fordham for these past 19 years. I have enjoyed getting to know you, and I truly believe, Father McShane, that you were the right person for Fordham at the right time. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. I also want to thank my co-chair for this evening's event, Ruth Lipper. Ruth, you were a joy to work with, and I'm only sorry I wasn't able to be there this evening to share the festivities. Finally, I want to thank all of you for coming and supporting the Curran Center. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. God bless and good night. One of the things you learn quickly by being around the Curran Center is that it's more than a center. It's a community. It's students, faculty, alumni, benefactors, and many others who have been brought into something larger, into this founding vision that Father Mark provided. Mark has this ability to recognize talent, to see the good in you, and to challenge you to direct that to the service of others. It's why many of us are lucky to, enough to call Father Mark a friend. However, we are privileged this evening to have someone who can say that they've been friends with Mark Massa longer than anyone else in the room. She shares with Mark that capacious vision for good and a remarkable energy for philanthropy that has benefited so many, including the center. And so it's my honor to introduce one of our honorary co-chairs for tonight's event, supporter and friend to the Curran Center, Mrs. Ruth Lipper. Thank you, Michael, and good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, am I good here? Okay. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here this evening to celebrate the current Center for American Catholic Studies and to be honoring my dear friend, Mark Massa. I'm glad you're sitting as its founding director. Tonight, I am here with my husband, my practically perfect husband, Michael Lipper. And together, in 2001, we were the founding donors for the American Catholic Studies program. This has been a wonderful evening of celebration of Mark and the Center and we need to thank all of those involved in its planning. You've already heard from Connie Curran, Michael Lee, Christine Hinsey, and Angela O'Donnell. Behind the scenes are Roger Malici, Liz Manigan, Justine Franklin, and the indomitable Maria Trizzulli. This has truly been a labor of love for all of us working together on this event and a demonstration of one of Mark's superpowers, his ability to forge enduring friendships 
and to link all of us together. For many of us here tonight, this is a reunion, and some of us are meeting face to face for the first time. Yet we're not strangers to one another. We are all part of Mark's network, and that is our great good fortune. I believe I am the first person in this room, speak up if I'm not, to have met Mark when we were freshmen at the University of Detroit in 1969. <laughs> Let that sink in. Now, I'd love to regale you with amusing and embarrassing stories about Mark in those days, but they would all involve self-incrimination. So we'll skip over all of that. However, one trip, memorable trip, many years ago, deserves mentioning. As a devoted son, Mark made a lifetime dream come true for his parents who were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. He invited them on a trip to Rome. He shared with me the itinerary that he had planned, very ambitious. It read more like the syllabus for a graduate school course <laughs> than a leisurely vacation. I decided to invite myself along for two reasons. First, who wouldn't want to go to Rome with Mark as your tour guide? Secondly, I felt a responsibility to run interference for Armand and Dolores, who might want to take the occasional cappuccino break, or maybe even sleep in late one morning. They were so proud of Mark, and they loved experiencing Rome with him. Poignantly, one of the first activities of the American Catholic Studies program was the Armand and Dolora, Dolores Massa lecture series, named in loving memory of them. Mark has been such an important part of our lives for so long that he's become a member of the extended Hinkson Lipper family. Also with Mike and me tonight are my much younger sisters, Kate Terrell and Jean Clark. Together with Mark, we have traveled the world and celebrated many holidays and happy occasions. Suffice it to say, in the last 53 years, Mark has been a stalwart friend a hilarious study group partner, a wonderful traveling companion, and the wind beneath my wings on more than one occasion. We've come a long way and had many adventures together. Now, with the continuing growth and the evolution of the Curran Center for American Catholic Studies, we have created a legacy together, which the Lipper Family Charitable Foundation proudly continues to support. Our latest gift to the Magis Scholarship Fund is made in loving memory of our brother-in-law and Kate's husband, Kevin Terrell. <laughs> to use a Mark Massaism, Mark, could you please overcome your native shyness <laughs> and now and come up and join me at the podium? <laughs> I was hoping you would be. So this is a citation from the center, well deserved. I'm not going to read it because practically everything in it has already been said tonight, but it is well deserved. I will overcome my native shyness and say a few words here. <laughs> Ruth and I met in 1969 as freshmen, but she was 10 and I was 18. So. <laughs> People say that if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And that has been true for me. Um, in 2001, about two weeks after 9-11, uh, we decided, Joe Hare was the president, quite visionary president, uh, we had decided we would start the Catholic Studies Center, and uh, he called me into his office and said, is this a good time? I said, there's never been a better time than, you know, America under attack and sort of all these racial things going on. 
for having a center where religion is talked about uh, in a rational, civilized way. So Joe here um, sort of gave me the green light. And then I went to my old and dear friends, Ruth and Mike Lipper, who uh, have supported me in so many other ways. And I, we were sitting on their lovely back porch in Summit, New Jersey. And I said, I would love to have um, some money to start a center. And Michael, of course, is a whiz with money, sort of saw exactly where I was going and said, um, how much money do you need? And I thought, not too, not too often does a Jesuit hear that. You know? <laughs> so, so I said, well, why don't we talk about sort of the things that I would like to do? Um, so Ruth and Mike put together the first five-year fund, which made the current center, before it was the current center, made the current center a reality. Um, and I said to Ruth and Mike, what name do you want on the center? Would you like Ruth Bishop, who's, who's Mike's mother, or would you want Ruth and Mike Lipper? And without missing a beat, uh, Mike said, I don't want our name anywhere on the center because every nun in the United States will call me up and ask, <laughs> and ask me to fix the, the roof of their retreat house. So, so we just called it the Center for American Catholic Studies. So there were six critical moments. And the first critical moment was when Ruth and Mike sort of, sort of quite generously before, it was just an, an idea in our heads, uh, came up with the, with the quite generous a gift that made it possible. So Ruth and Mike, I want you to stand up, please. <laughs> so the first critical moment was Ruth and Mike Lippert giving me a very generous grant that made it possible. Before we moved into the beautiful Duane, Duane was a shell at that point. Nothing was in Duane Library. Um, and the, Cur and the Catholic Study Center was a room on the third floor of uh, Keating Hall. And I had, it was Cardinal Dulles's old room. So I, I, I actually asked Joe O'Hare if I was going to get the red hat as a result of it. He, <laughs> he informed me that I was not, as a matter of fact. So like, okay. But Joe O'Hare and his successor, Father Joe McShane, from the very first supported the center and made possible an expansion of a vision that sort of grew, grew thanks to all the people working in the center. So Joe's not with us, but I want Joe McShane to stand up. Joe, where are you? Right. So the second critical moment was Joe McShane saying, yes, we're gonna support this, we're gonna do what we can. The third critical moment when I realized that I couldn't answer all the phone calls, we, we had this event in Keating first that seats 480 people. And I had no secretary, no one else, and we were trying to, you know, it was an RSPB PC event, and people were calling up and my phone could only take 20 messages at a time. So I remember staying till like midnight to empty the phone messages to make sure I was keeping track. And I said, this is ridiculous. So I went to the provost and said, uh, I really need an experienced administrator to sort of run the center. Um, and of course, everybody knew that the most experienced and respected administrator was Maria Terzulli, but then in the philosophy. <laughs> so, I, so I went over, I went over to the lobby department. I went over to the philosophy department and the then chair of the philosophy department said, what are you doing? And I said, none of your business. And I shut the door. And I sat down in Maria's office and I said, I gave her the hard sell. I said, Maria, this is something that's in COET and it's just beginning. I don't know where it's going to go. But of all the people that I know at Fordham, I really want you to be the administrator. So will you consider this? And she said, yes. And I said, how long do you need to make up your mind? She said, no. Yes, I will take it right now. <laughs> so Maria was the third critical moment, and she is the mother to all the majors. So Maria, st stand up again, please. <laughs> Bruno Santanacito mentioned the name of John and Connie Curran, who I had never met before. And he arranged to meet, for John and myself, to uh, have lunch at 
Bobby Vans, which was at the base of Park Avenue. And we met for lunch, the biggest steak I'd ever seen in my life at the moment. And I, I sort, of, sort of gave John, and John was a very careful thinker and was used to running businesses, and I said, this is what I want to do, uh, and if you're interested in helping me, I would really appreciate uh, your help, because we need a lot of financial support. And he said, let me talk to Connie, and I'll get back to you in two weeks. And two weeks later, he uh, called me up and said, we will pledge the, the, the amount that will be a naming gift, for which I was very grateful. And one of my greatest moments for John, we invited John, or we started having these great Christmas parties that Mrs. Terzulli put together in the Great Hall at Duane. And John showed up, un unbeknownst to me. So I went over, and you know, it's great to see him. The students came over to thank him. And when he left, he handed me a personal check like this. And I looked at it, and I turned white, and Rhea came running over. It, was, it said, make out to one and zero, zero, one hundred million dollars on a personal check. And I almost fell over, and Rhea said, what's wrong? She, Rhea thought I was having a heart attack. And the, all the, a bunch of students, I remember Tyler Reinigle and Matt Merkilla came over and said, can we just hold it for a moment? Because we just like, so I want to really thank John and Connie Curran for their vision and support. So let us applaud them. Finally, I know about, my name is Least. Uh, the Kern Center has been blessed with truly visionary leadership, uh, something that I began in a very sort of like simple way has grown and blossomed and become a quite important national center, and even international center for study for Catholic studies, thanks to the visionary leadership of both Christine Hinsey and uh, the current director who's been you didn't tell me all of this was going to happen tonight, so I was kind of um, overwhelmed. Michael said, oh, some interesting things to, will happen to you tonight. So I would ask Christine and Michael to take a bow, please. For <laughs> the General of the Society of Jesus has said that the, the measure of success of Jesuit schools is not how much money are our graduates make, but the kind of persons they are. And by, the, by that measure, the current center has been a wildly successful Jesuit center. So thank all of you very much. <laughs> the final, and by no means least significant, success story of the center are the graduates produced by the current center who are impressive, generous, smart, and are very street savvy. So I'm very proud to have a small part in that. Um, I help out at a parish in North Cambridge called St. Peter's. And when you have, um, when you help out St. Peter's, when you have the mass, you have the phone duty. And I had five o'clock mass in the fall semester and I, Quarter five, the phone rang, and, and I said, hello, St. Peter's Parish, how can I help you? And the, the woman on the other end said, could you tell me who has the five o'clock mass? And I said, indeed I can, Father Mark Massa. And there was this pause, and she said, is that the short, plump, balding priest? <laughs> I said, as a matter of fact, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you cannot, in fact, judge a book by its cover. <laughs> I have, I've been blessed by an extraordinarily wonderful group of friends and students. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark, for your wisdom, for your energy, and for your vision. Hopefully we can continue that simple desire of yours, as you would often put it, to get smart people together to do great things. You know, I came to Fordham in the fall of 2004, a year after a certain former dean of students had returned after serving as president of Scranton to take that role here. It was a long year for me, 
one with a lot of adjustments moving to New York City after finishing my degree at a certain little Catholic school in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> As the year came to a close, I remember the president giving his message to the graduating class. What I remember most from that message was a passion for Fordham. Yeah, it was a little cheesy. Yeah, it could dip into old-fashioned Irish sentimentalism. But oh man, he could make you believe. I mean really believe in what a special place Fordham is. About how each and every one of us were a part of something larger. A university that's not a Catholic Disneyland, but one with its feet planted firmly in the world, seeking to transform it by the light of the gospel, here at the Jesuit University of New York. My 18 years here at Fordham have been graced with his leadership, his passion, and his commitment to bring out the best in this place and in each one of us who proudly belong to the Fordham family. And so before he comes up to offer some remarks, let me offer a toast to Father Joseph McShane. Let me get a glass. <laughs> As the Curran Center and Fordham itself navigates forward in sometimes fair and sometimes stormy waters, we can only be grateful for the support you have provided, the freedom to ask the difficult intellectual questions, and the moral courage to pursue sapientia et doctrina. To the president of Fordham University, the Reverend Joseph M. McShane of the Society of Jesus. Yeah. Come on up, Father McShane. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, how can I begin this? I know it's late. I know you're weary. I know your plans don't include me, but here we are. <laughs> All of us lonely, all right? Uh, at the outset, I want to thank Michael for that extraordinarily gracious and generous uh, toast, one that I don't really deserve. Uh, you, I want to hear, I want to say a few things about Mark. I mean, really, a few things. How can one say only a few things about Mark Massey? It is impossible. I understand that there are now, Christine, correct me if I'm wrong, six dissertations being written on Mark in the theology graduate program, <laughs> correct? Uh, everything from humor to you figure it out. You've heard him referred to and praised for many things. You know, a, a brilliant researcher and writer. He's an elegant writer. Very elegant style all the time, Mark. Uh, he is a gifted administrator. He is a man who is blessed with a great sense of humor. He is a man with a golden touch for getting gold. Uh, he is a man that uh, inspires students inspires them so much that they come back and they give. And Mark, just one correction. You know, you said that you know, it's not really about how much they make, it's about their character. Well, it's partly both. Uh, <laughs> as somebody who has to beg, I would say that, and I think you know that is true. The one thing that has not yet been really spotlighted about Mark, uh, except he gave us a little bit of an insight into it when he spoke, and that is this, Mark, on top of being scholar, researcher, great stylist, great administrator, friend to many, a humorist, uh, and someone who can inspire. The one thing that was not mentioned is that Mark is an extraordinarily, uh, I would say, faithful and extraordinarily hardworking and gifted priest. And I think everyone who has been a part of the current center would agree that Mark is all that we said he was tonight, but he's more. He has a pastoral heart. He is deeply concerned with uh, every student that he deals with. He takes their joys and sorrows very seriously. He does not take, he does not allow them a moment to be filled with self-pity, rather he challenges them to rise. 
and he speaks to them. He talks out their problems with them. He may give us the impression he is always someone who is about talking. This is not the case. Mark is a great listener. He's a pastoral listener. And that is, I think, what makes him even more endearing and more compelling than all the other gifts. Because anyone who has been in his presence, anyone who has worked with him, knows that he is on top of everything else, or at the heart of everything else, or beneath everything else. He is the guy with the pastoral heart, who is always there, whether it's early morning, late night. He is the one to whom students turn for advice. He's the one to whom colleagues turn for encouragement. He's the one to whom Jesuits turn both for stories, which are great, for laughter, which is great, but for an ear that is attentive and a heart that is responsive. This is Mark, I think, as I said, I think this is the foundation of everything that you've done. And I remember meeting you for the first time at Lemoyne College in Syracuse. And you said, I'm thinking of leaving the Detroit province <laughs> and maybe coming east. What do you think? Do you remember that? We were on, getting ready in a procession. And I said, I think it'd be a great idea. Thank you for taking it seriously. But this pastoral side is what makes, makes him a gem, a confessor, a friend, and somebody who, through the use of those gifts, Mark, you have made it possible for young people to believe in God. You made it possible for young people to give the church a second chance, to fall in love with the gospel. They don't know this, but I know that that's what you've been about, you sly boots. <laughs> <laughs> Talented missionary for our age, pastor for many hearts, it is an honor to know you and a grace to call you a friend. And also, I would say, a joy to say, there goes a Jesuit who is always in motion, never satisfied with the present, always looking for challenge, for new horizons. He's what Ignatius had in mind. Maybe not all the stories, but mostly. <laughs> it's what Ignatius had in mind when he said, all those who wish to serve God, our Lord, under the banner of the cross, come near. And they do. So Mark, for being a great priest, a great scholar, a, sp a speaker of, un I would say, unparalleled power and eloquence, a teller of tales, and a friend to all, I salute you. I thank you for creating, enlivening the current center, a center that I never thought, I wasn't sure, would be able to survive your departure. But you, in your wisdom, had prepared for successors, all of whom succeeded. And so for all of these, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, not only for my part, or on my part, on my behalf. I thank you on behalf of Fordham, the whole university, not just that extraordinary thing we call the current center. So Mark, I do something now that I really do. I bow to you. <laughs> Thank you, Father McShane. Thank you, Mark Massa. And as we close, let me offer a, a few more words of thanks. Many thanks to development and university relations, to Roger Malici and Justine Franklin for making this such a special night, and especially to Liz Manigan and that amazing team that made so many contributions, <laughs> including Roe Gill, Liz Davis, Audrey Gilbert, Mark Lenz, and L.A. Maust, among others. Fantastic work. <laughs> Thanks to our co-chairs, Connie Kern, who's not with us, and Ruth Lipper for their patience, <laughs> persistence, and unending support. To our advisory board, who have worked so hard, especially to the chair, Anthony Filarimo, to Jen Sawyer, Michelle Finn, and so many others who gave their time and effort. Thank you to our associate directors at the center for their untiring work, 
to Angela O'Donnell, John Seitz, and Michael Pepper. And a special thank you to our administrator, Maria Terzulli, for every detail, every arrangement, every task, every Tino's order. <laughs> you are the Dorothy Day to Mark Massa's Peter Morin. <laughs> And finally, thanks to everyone here for making this special event a success and for your crucial ongoing support of the Curran Center for American Catholic Studies. This has been a truly wonderful evening of celebration that was made possible by you. So good night, adios, cuídense, and our bar is open for another 15 minutes. So enjoy. <laughs> more music, more mingling, and magic.